Okay, now let's take more of a systemic approach. We've been very focused on an individual cell. Now let's take a look more at a systemic approach and build in some more details on the systemic metabolism that we talked about during Energy Foundations. So we've eaten a meal that has some carbs in it. We've digested and absorbed those carbs, which we are very familiar with now, and we have managed to absorb them in their monosaccharide form across the intestine. So now they are traveling through the portal circulation directly to the liver. Now, um, the pancreas can sense this increased in, uh, increase in blood glucose concentration, and that is going to stimulate the pancreas to secrete insulin. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens at the liver. So the liver is gonna get that first pass of monosaccharides. Um, additionally, uh, the insulin from the pancreas is going to stimulate glycogenesis in the liver. So the liver is gonna be taking in um, the monosaccharides that it just absorbed, and it will be converting some of them to glycogen through glycogenolysis, I'm sorry, through glycogenesis, the anabolic process, glycogenesis, building glycogen. Um, in, once glycogen it has been repleted, then insulin is going to be stimulating lipogenesis. Now, what happens with those monosaccharides? The liver keeps some of them that we just absorbed from the diet, but not all. So it's going, the liver is going to keep all of the fructose and all of the galactose, and then it's going to keep about 30 to 40% of the glucose that we just absorbed. That, and uh, at this point, the uh, liver is going to be using glucose for fuel. That means that the uh, glucose that the liver spits out into the rest of the circulation, that will be about 60 to 70% of the glucose, glucose load from our meal. From there, that glucose is gonna be traveling around the bloodstream. Um, the brain is gonna be using glucose as fuel. The uh, glucose is gonna be entering the uh, neuronal cells through GLUT3, which is a glucose transporter that is not insulin sensitive. So whether insulin is present or not, neurons are able to take in glucose. That's a good thing. Um, glucose is also going to be traveling around the bloodstream and it can be taken up by the muscle. Now notice in this case, the, the way that the muscle takes in glucose from the blood is through GLUT4. GLUT4 is an insulin sensitive glucose transporter. So GLUT4 is only going to be present on the muscle cell's membrane when insulin is present. We'll talk in more detail about that in a second. Um, in this case, at this stage, the muscle can be using glucose as fuel, and the muscle will also be undergoing glycogenesis, where it's taking that glucose and building it into glycogen. And then glucose can also be taken up by the adipose. The adipose is similar to the muscle in that it also has the GLUT4 transporter, um, which is again, insulin sensitive. So the adipose cells are only gonna be able to take in glucose through GLUT4 when insulin is present. Um, and then in here, the adipose cells can be performing lipogenesis with that glucose, and it'll be storing, the, uh, storing it as triglycerides. And additionally, the adipose cells can be using glucose as fuel. So this is overall what's going on in the fed state. Now we're gonna talk in a little bit more detail about how some of these uh, hormones are working more down at the molecular level.